Well, welcome back, YouTubers. In our last video, we uh, did a quick review and took a tour of this uh, Toshiba HM84, uh, 52 HM84 to be exact, that I got for free on Craigslist. And uh, today I'm going to be uh, touching more on how I um, repaired this. And if any of my viewers have the same problem, perhaps you can uh, fix yours too and get uh, many thousands more hours of entertainment out of it. We're going to be taking a closer look at that here in today's video. Uh, let's go over some of the supplies that you'll need first, though. Alright, for this video, we will be once again laying off the uh, tripod and the auto and the, I'm sorry, the manual focus on the camera here. So it will be a bit shaky. Just bear with me. To get started here, we're going to look at uh, some of the supplies we'll need um, before we get started here with the repair. First, you'll need a screwdriver. These are standard screwdrivers here. This is a large Phillips type screwdriver. Uh, this has a, a built-in handle as well. It's also worth noting that you will need a longer than normal screwdriver. This screwdriver here, if I can do this single-handedly, um, the end to where the handle begins is around four inches of screwdriver. Throughout the video, I'm going to be referring to the guide on Abs Forum. And at this time, I'd encourage you to check out the link in the video description to that guide as it is very helpful and you will want to give that a read and watch the video all the way through before you attempt this yourself. Uh, this, you also need a replacement ballast. It, since I'm recording this afterwards, this is actually my old one, but uh, your new shiny one that you can get from a repair site will look very similar to this. Now at this point you're probably wondering, well, two bunny, what ballast do I need? Well, that's a very good question. There, um, the one that comes with these is part number two three one two two four six eight. Although, if you look those up online, you'll find they are very expensive. Usually, too expensive to replace in your set. I found an alternative one uh, that's actually designed for a slightly different model, but it does work just as well. And that's the 2312497. It looks slightly different, but it is the same thing, and it does get the job done. And that's what I have running in there right now. Uh, and that's what you saw power up when I um, did the previous video. So you'll need one of those. Uh, I recommend getting the one from shopjimmy.com. It is $65, but you can price match, and I found one site for $50, and that's probably around the ceiling for how much money you'd want to spend on something like this. You also need some pliers. So now that you got all your supplies together, we can get started. You want to join me over here by the back of the set with your standard Phillips screwdriver and you want to remove oops you want to remove the black screws that are holding the um, back panel in all around this step's pretty straightforward there's a couple there and uh, all around so you want to pull those off then you'll see something a little bit like what is pictured here um, you want to go from there so you want to remove the screws from that uh, silver brace that's in the center there that you can probably see right now it has a zip tie attached to it you want to remove all the screws from that and also the bronze screws toward the bottom that uh, hold the whole light engine assembly in. Personally, I recommend cutting off that uh, zip tie. Uh, I don't think I actually did on my Looking down a little bit, there's a, um, a kind of hard to see screw uh, just underneath um, what we just are uh, kind of toward the top of the set for what we just did. You want to undo that. And from there, that'll kind of there, that's the, that'll uh, release a larger plastic piece there that uh, kind of holds some of the cables in place and does a few various different things. Um, when you pull that, then you'll you'll see the two um, little plastic whatever those things are. That's where your uh, pliers come in handy, and you'll wanna use those to undo uh, those braces that are holding the cables down. Thank you. 
Next you'll want to unplug the uh, yellow, blue, and red connectors uh, on the left, as well as that, um, that kind of bronze covered, um, I'm sorry, as well as that bronze colored ribbon cable thing. Now you'll, you just want to make a note of which way it goes so you don't put it in the wrong way when you put everything back together. From there, that'll give you a little more slack on the rest of everything. There's still some stuff plugged up to that light engine, so you don't want to just pull it out. You want to slowly and carefully pull it out toward you, assuming you have all the screws and everything undone that we've gone through already. Uh, you can pull that out a little more. Uh, you'll find you can uh, just get the back corner of it um, away from the front there, and that you'll be able to turn it to the right, push it in a little bit more, and you'll have better access to everything in general. And then as you turn it, um, and you can kind of see this in the picture in the uh, corner there, you'll have access to the ballast area. You want to undo those two screws. That's where that uh, slightly longer than normal screwdriver comes in handy for, whoops, for this particular step. You want to uh, undo those and then uh, be careful not to lose them. Uh, then you want to unplug those two connectors to the ballast. Then to actually release the board out, you'll just want to um, pull on those two uh, plastic clips as pictured, and the whole thing should just come out. At this point, Oops. On yours, the um, the connector here will still be plugged up to the, um, it'll still be attached, so you'll want to undo the screws that hold it in, and remember which way it goes so that you can put your new ballast in for that. And throw out your old one, or recycle it, or whatever you can do with these things. Reassembly is basically the reverse of what the um, disassembly was, and if you did everything right and didn't wreck anything uh, in the process, it should fire right up when you start the set again. A few things to note, uh, you do just want to be careful in there, um, don't pull too hard on any cables or anything or tear anything or that could be the end. Also disconnect the power from the wall uh, before you uh, work on there. While you do have it taken apart and before you put it back together, it might even be a good idea to take some compressed air and or a vacuum and uh, clean some of the dust out as I know this particular set was very, very nasty when I uh, took it apart. And from here you should be able to just power it up right from the get-go. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video today and that it was uh, helpful to at least somebody who might have also had this problem as well. Uh, I would encourage anybody watching to check out the uh, description and see the helpful links in there. Uh, I should have some links to some uh, a lot of photos I took of the inside of the set that should make the repair process easier. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there that'll help on top of the video here anyway. So I encourage you all to check all that out. Um, don't forget to check out my other videos on my channel at tubebunny.co.cc. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.